ordinary time of the church, as we said, second Sunday, going into our second week. It's also called the ordinal time, as in ordinal numbers, first, second, third, fourth, tracking time throughout the year. And it reminds us that as Christians, as Catholics, we're always moving. We're not static. We're not standing still. Every year we track the, the conception of Jesus, his birth, his childhood, and then into his manhood, his public life, his teaching, his preaching, his miracles, and then ultimately into his suffering and his death, his resurrection, and then those 40 days staying with the apostles, and then his ascension, and then the acts of the apostles after. But that's true of the spiritual life, too. We're always moving, that the Holy Spirit of God is always prompting us, urging us, trying to inspire us on one side, and then the devil is tempting us on the other side. And the world is tempting us. So we're always being pulled. We're never standing still. We're always trying to move forward as Christians. And that kind of gives a little bit of excitement to life. That um, there's always something more to learn. Always something more to do. Also a couple notes about some Catholic culture. This past week a great hero in the Catholic Church in the United States died. Father Michael Scanlon. He's a Franciscan priest that was sent to become the president of Franciscan University in Steubenville, Ohio, back in the late 70s, early 80s. And he reformed and renewed that small university in this really industrial part of Ohio. Very unlikely place to have a Catholic renewal. But that one small university has, more, has had more impact on the Catholic Church in the United States than any other Catholic college in the past 30 years. They started youth conferences. They have several each summer. Thousands of youth go to Steubenville to be inspired, but it's become so popular, they actually now have them on satellite campuses across the country during the summer so that more young people can access it and be inspired and go home. They've had many graduates who've become Catholic priests and religious sisters because they've been inspired in their faith while studying there. And many young people who study there come home and become active in youth ministry or cantors in the choir like Mary Scott. So we are very grateful for his work. He had a very bold vision. And his funeral was yesterday, so we pray for Father Michael, and we thank God for his life. Also, uh, this past week I was away for a few days with some priest friends in Indiana, and we visited the headquarters of Dynamic Catholic, which is a new apostolate in the Catholic Church, started by Matthew Kelly. That name should be familiar to us. We've promoted some of his CDs and some of his books. In fact, the book we gave out at Christmas this past year called Rediscovering Catholicism. He wrote that. And he started this great new movement. It's, it is very dynamic. He's giving talks around the country, publishing new books, and uh, has a staff of about 40 young Catholic men and women who are very energetic and very connected in social media. So a real hope for the church. Um, but one of his messages is we need to be bolder. That bishops aren't being bold enough and lay Catholics aren't being bold enough to say, what's exciting about being Catholic? What's, what's the big deal about Jesus or the Mass or the sacraments or the Pope, the saints? And be bold in inviting other people to it. We have something great that other people want, even if they don't know it. And so to be bolder in inviting people and hopefully... We'll reflect on that as a parish in this new year, 2017, and, and do a better job of that. Be more dynamic. So some good, uh, hopeful things going on in the church. In the scripture today, as we said, we're being challenged by God, that he does have work for us to do, that we should be seeking his will, that God is, and we're not alone, that, that as we enter in 2017, he has things he wants us to learn and experience and do. And so kind of the drama being played out is, is, is will we recognize those opportunities? Will we do? Will we accomplish what he wants? The first reading from the prophet Isaiah, God says, I formed you as my servant from the womb. Indeed, it is too little for you to be my servant. You are to have an effect to the ends of the earth. God wants us to change the world, that our life will affect people around the world somehow. 
Maybe not all of us are going to run a Catholic university like Father Scanlon. Maybe we're not all going to start a worldwide apostle like Matthew Kelly. Maybe we don't have those speaking skills or writing skills that he has. But from the womb, God knew who we would be and what abilities we would have and what circumstances of life we would face and what we could do, the possibilities. He says, don't settle for a little thing. God wants us to have a big impact. Impact. And then that was our prayer in the psalm today. Here I am, Lord, I come to do your will. Okay, Lord, what, what is the plan? That should be, in a sense, our prayer every Sunday. Here I am, Lord, it's Sunday. I come to do your will. What are we going to do this week, the next seven days? Who am I going to meet? What conversation am I going to have? What am I going to read? What am I going to learn? Who do you want me to help and encourage and reach out to? I come to do your will. If we can foster that attitude more and more, we will affect the world. And then again, St. Paul in his first letter to the Corinthians he says, I, Paul, write to you, called to be an apostle by the will of God. He had a sense of a call. God said, Paul, I need your help. Will you accept the task before you? I want you to be like an apostle to continue the work that I began. And what holds us back from recognizing God's will and doing it? One of the major things is called sloth. Sometimes we think of that as laziness, but it's more than laziness. We all have lazy days. We just don't have the energy to push forward. But sloth is different. Sloth is, is more like fear. I'm afraid of what God might ask me to do. I'm afraid to go out of my comfort zone. I'm afraid he might ask me to be a leader of some sort, to step out of the crowd. I'm comfortable being a little sheep, but I don't want to be the shepherd. But the truth is God asks all of us to be a shepherd in some capacity. As parents or to be a leader among our friends, a good example, or to our brothers or sisters. Or in the workplace to be a good example, to be a little different. Matthew Kelly says, indeed, God wants us to be the best version of ourselves." That's a phrase he often uses. God wants us to be excellent, to overcome our shortcomings to develop those talents, those special gifts that each has. Each of us come in contact with different people. If we don't impact them, no one will. So how can we become the best version of ourselves in 2017? Think of some examples. Uh, one image that comes to mind of this kind of fear of the future. Sometimes you see high school students and they, they start dating for the first time. First boyfriend or girlfriend. And it's a, you know, it's a neat experience. I haven't had this before. But sometimes they can become very clingy. And there's almost a sense that we better stick together because I might never meet anybody else. Right? This is my one shot. And like, I might, this might be it. And as parents, we say, well, I mean, sometimes you do meet your, your spouse in high school. Sometimes that happens. It's possible. But usually not. Don't be motivated by fear of the future, that this might be your only shot. Recognize there's a whole world of people out there to meet. When you go off to work or off to college or you move, friends are friends. Right? God has big plans. He has someone he wants you to meet. This could be it, but let's discern in a healthy way, not out of fear. Pope Francis says, ask God his will for your life and have courage. Right, be bolder. Big things await. Thinking that some examples from the Bible. We talked of St. Paul. He said he sensed, he sensed that he was called by God. He was, he was a tent maker. That was his job. He made tents, you know, stitching tents to sell for people to use. It's an important job, but not having like a big impact beyond perhaps your few customers. And God said, that's, that's good work, Paul. But I have a different work for you. And because Paul said yes, he traveled more than any of the apostles. He went all around the Mediterranean to foreign countries, preaching in this, the big cities. Paul wrote more of the New Testament than anybody else. He's conveyed so many teachings that have continued to be read for the rest of human history. 
God said, it's not enough for you to be my servant. You will have an effect to the ends of the world. Think of St. Peter. He, he fished. He liked to fish. That was his job. He fished. And we need fish, right? Food is the food, supplying food. But he could have, he could have said, I'm going to stick with this because it's, I know what I'm doing. It's kind of secure. It's hard work. And some days it's not very successful. And I'm living from day to day. But Jesus said, no, Peter, come follow me. He became the first pope from fishing to leading the biggest religion in the history of the world. Think of Mary as we just came out of the Christmas season. This young girl from Nazareth. Scripture tells us Nazareth was a simple, a quiet, small town. She came from a simple family. Probably had simple hopes to meet someone, start a family. That's God's plan for some of us, but not for Mary. As a young girl, Mary, will you do my will? Okay. What is it, Lord? You're going to be the mother of God. What? What does that even mean? Mary gave us Christmas. To have an effect to the end of the world. Most of us, of course, not quite like Peter, Paul, and Mary. But some important impact on another that will change their life. We might not even see the effects down the road. But just to have this openness again as we enter this week and we enter this year. When I was traveling out to Indiana last week, I was getting on a plane last Sunday afternoon, and whenever I get on a plane, there's an anticipation, like, who am I going to sit next to and what conversation am I going to have? Well, I had the most fascinating conversation I've ever had on a plane, and I've had a lot of them. But just the young man I was sitting next to, I went as deep as I've ever gone in a conversation about the real depths of the Catholic faith because he was open to it. Because his mother was Jewish, not practicing, and his father was a fallen away Protestant. The most unlikely candidate to go to the depths of Catholic faith. But he's searching, and he's been to India, and he's been to Thailand, and conferences around the country, meditating, seeking the meaning of life and of God. And so if we just have that sense, all of us, What's going to happen this week? Because you're at church tonight, something's going to happen. Because you're asking God to let something happen. Right? There's an excitement to our life. Every week, what conversation, what person in need will I encounter? Right? It might be in the grocery store, checkout line. It might be at, at the office, at the, at the coffee pot. It might be a conversation with a brother or sister on the phone or across the fence at, and my neighbor. It might be something that I'm supposed to experience, some book I'm supposed to read, or something I'm supposed to see on TV, but I'm supposed to ponder and learn from it. But just to make those words of the psalm our own this week and this year, here I am, Lord, I come to do your will. What is your work? What is your plan? And so maybe as we conclude today, we choose this simple prayer. You might have heard me say it before, but it's a good prayer to incorporate into your daily life, a great prayer to teach to our children. So let's, let's end with this prayer. I'll say it first, and then maybe we can repeat it two times. Let's just close our eyes as we continue in this Mass, continue in this week and this year. Lord, show me your will for my life and help me to desire it. We pray together. Lord, show me your will for my life and help me to desire it. Again, Lord, show me your will for my life and help me to desire it.